Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. I'm Mark Stein, Thrive founder and your podcast host. We're creating sustainable, inclusive, and multi-generational residential communities. Our mission is to combat the epidemic of isolation, revitalize communities, and help others discover the many benefits of engaged community living by offering unique and ecologically sustainable co-living options. In this podcast series, join us as we discuss co-living, in addition to bringing you interesting people from around the world who are doing cool things to expand your knowledge and satisfy your curiosity. Through this podcast, learn more about our concept and see how Thrive Co-Living Communities will bring together people from all walks of life who want to enjoy the best of independent and group living. To find out more about us, please visit our website at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. Thanks for watching and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities podcast. I'm your host, Mark Stein. Are you looking to start a new personal health journey in the new year? I'm here today with Sonia Magruder, an integrative, and I'll never say it right, integrative nutrition health coach. One of the first things we'll talk about is the correct pronunciation for that. Uh, after a stressful career in the real estate industry, Sonia decided to pursue her own health journey, which led to a new career as a nutritional health coach. Sonia now helps her clients find the sustainable, personalized solutions they need to improve their health. Welcome to the Thrive Co-Living Communities podcast, Sonia. Thank you so much, Mark. Happy to be here. So let's start with the basics. Um, what do most of us do wrong? And uh, in, we'll, we'll do a high level uh, examination here first. What do most of us do wrong and what are some of the first steps that you recommend? And I'm sure it's a step-by-step -step process. Most of us have too many things that we're not doing properly for ourselves. And it's a matter of stepping through those things that we need to do to make lasting lifestyle changes. I'm not trying to steal your, your thunder, but I bet it's, I bet it's got to be uh, a series of steps. So yeah, start You're us off. Okay, you're right on track. So there's there's four main things that we really need to pay attention to if we're going to talk about basic pillars of health. One is sleep, our sleep hygiene, our diet, nutrition, and then how we manage stress and getting movement. Those are basic things. And if we can master those and optimize those, we can do pretty well. Now, one of the things that is a big problem is the food. It's the lack of real nutrition and it's the ultra processed foods that people are eating. And many of them are marketed as being healthy and they're not, they're anything, but you always want to look at the backside and actually read the ingredients, not what the front of the package says, because there's a lot of greenwashing, what we call greenwashing out there. So it's really helping people transition off of these highly processed foods because they are laden with ingredients that have chemicals like the toxic chemical glyphosate, which is the chemical in Roundup weed killer. And these, the crops of most of the ingredients that end up in these foods like corn, canola, soy, even sugar beets, wheat, barley, and oats are sprayed with Roundup. They're sprayed with this. So it gets into the plant. It can be washed out, rinsed out, or cooked out. And then it ultimately ends up in the food that many people are consuming. And the reason we need to know about this and the reason why it's such a big problem is it is very disruptive to the gut microbiome. And our gut is where 70% of our immune system is. It's also where 90 to 95% of serotonin is made, which is the feel good hormone. So there's a lot of a connection between our food and our mood because of that gut brain connection. Got it. You know, a good example of that, I was at Subway trying to get a relatively quick and healthier lunch. And I picked out of the bag of chips, I picked sun chips out. I didn't read the back, but I bet it's got just as much garbage in there as Lay's potato chips. And it's yeah. 
it's sort of sold as a healthy alternative. Yes, even the name, the name Sun Chips makes mm -hmm. it sound natural and healthy. But I, I'm sure you're right. If you look at the back, it's probably going to have some corn ingredient. It's going to have canola or soybean oil, most likely. And the glyphosate that is sprayed on these crops that end up being in those ingredients is, I mentioned it's disruptive to the gut microbiome, which is a problem. It's also linked to some serious diseases like leaky gut, autoimmune disease, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a cancer. The World Health Organization has already said that glyphosate is a probable human carcinogen, but it is in all these foods and all these products. And even it's the genetically modified ones. The, the main ones are corn, canola, soy, and sugar beets, but even the non-genetically modified crops like wheat, barley, oats, though they use glyphosate on it as a drying agent, as a desiccant to be able to pr produce quicker, you know, get production out there quicker yeah. of those crops. And so it's there. It's in, if you're eating oatmeal and it's not organic, there's a good chance there's glyphosate in there. And, you know, we think of oatmeal as a healthy food, heart healthy and all that. So we have to really, one of the things, first things I do is help create awareness for people around these things. Mm -hmm. You know, people are, part of it is that they're busy. Part of it is mm -hmm. that we're lazy um, and go for the, the quick fix. Um, so how do you deal with the, some of it's going to be resistance to uh, cooking. A lot of it's going to have to be cooked from scratch, special ingredients. How do you work with people to help them make that transition? We'll just talk about diet first. Okay. Well, I love that you asked me that question because I have a 90 day program that helps solve that issue. They are going to have a reg regular meal that they'll put together themselves, but you mentioned convenience and that's often the rub with people is people are busy. They're running around, they're taking care of family, they're taking care of their businesses. And that's why they're going in and grabbing that gas station food. That's why they're going through the drive throughs I used to do it myself and think that the grilled chicken sandwich at McDonald's was the healthy option, which now I know better what, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you do. So what this program does is it gives people just enough structure in a 90 day period and then it tapers them down to a maintenance program, which helps keep them on track. But this structure helps people to transition off these highly processed foods. And it gives two superfood green delicious shakes that you make their powder. You just add the liquid to them and some ice. You can blend fruit in them, but each shake is equivalent to the nutrition of six superfood salads and they're convenient. It's literally healthy, fast food. And there's a protein component, which is tablets and a gut health component and a couple other things. But this makes it so easy for people. They don't even have to think about what they're going to eat. Their breakfast and their lunch is taken care of. So they just have to get that one meal. They can have fruits and veggies for snacks. That's easy. You can bring that with you to work. The It comes one month at a time. And the first box comes with a portable battery operated blender. So it's literally like no excuses. You bring your blender, you bring everything with you, and it's very satisfying. Now, let me be sure I understand. Does the does this this meal plan come come with breakfast and lunch, or <clears throat> it excludes breakfast and lunch and has the dinner option? What which one is it? So it replaces two meals. Okay. So there's the, the shake and the protein. Those are each going to be a meal and it could really be whatever meals you want. Most people like to use those for breakfast and lunch, and then they have their dinner. Some people prefer to have a lunch, normal, you know, regular food that they're going to either make or get at a restaurant, which I help people with how to order as healthy as possible at a restaurant but it's better to make your own food, obviously. But to whichever two meals out of the day they want to replace with this, they can do that. So it takes so much guesswork out of it. And it's just there. It's convenient. They know exactly what they're going to do. There's even a tracker sheet where they track everything as they do it. Okay. So <clears throat> two questions come to mind. One is I watch a lot of podcasts um, and AG1 seems to be something that keeps recurring um, mm -hmm. as a healthy drink regarding gut health and all that. Are you familiar with that particular product? Because I think there is a lot of awareness out there for people who watch podcasts. Yeah. I don't think it's on TV. 
Yes, I am familiar with it. So the one that I have is next level because it's certified organic. Okay. And I that's the differentiating factor there. But very similar and com- relatively complete uh, package. Mm-hmm. Yeah, loaded with superfoods. Like I said, one shake is equal to the nutrition that you would get from six superfood salads. And the fact that it's certified organic, you know, there's no pesticides, there's no herbicides, there's nothing sketchy in there at all. And the company that I get these products from, they are, it's direct from the manufacturer. They are the manufacturer. They've been doing this for about 30 years now. They were doing organic before there was a USDA organic label. So they're very mission driven. The owners, I'm good friends with them. And they their heart really is helping people get off of these processed foods that are greatly contributing to lifestyle disease and giving them an alternative and providing a solution. Sure. Before I ask the next question, let me just call attention to the fact that I look like Papa Smurf uh, with the co- my coloring today. <clears throat> so I, I look purple so, <clears throat> and I, I didn't check the lighting before we started. So please just uh, audience excuse this. I don't really look this purple. I'm relatively healthy, but I don't look as bright and shiny as Sonia does. Um, you know, if you if you do a presentation and you forgot your belt or the equivalent, you're not comfortable until you say, hey, I forgot my belt. Excuse me. So anyway, now I, now I feel OK. I can OK, good. you got that out of the way. You don't look yeah. purple to me, but. Oh, I don't. OK, well, no. maybe it's just in mine. Um, so let's talk about something else you brought up, which is how to eat relatively healthy when you're when you're eating out Mm -hmm. um so what are your go-to recommended options when people are out and and they have to they have to eat something that they're that's not prepared for them right so one of the things that i'm really adamant about is the oils that are used in restaurants the seed oils extracted oils that are very inflammatory and typically they're using canola oil they're using soybean oil they're using maybe peanut oil um, but sometimes they'll say it's it's mm-hmm. olive oil but it's often cut you don't really know what you're getting so it could be cut with canola oil to make it go farther because the canola is cheap and right. you know it's, it's a business bottom line so what i often do and it's funny because i was just on channel a just did a tv spot this morning about this that you just asked about And what I do, this is my go-to thing. I'll order sort of a big salad. Most restaurants have a great, you know, salad options, a few salad options on the menu, no dressing. And then I'll ask for a side of avocado, which almost every restaurant has, and some balsamic vinegar. And sometimes I'll even bring a little container with some, some herbs, like some Italian seasoning and some garlic powder and a little pinch of black pepper and a pinch of Himalayan salt and mix that in the vinegar part because they bring you a little cup of vinegar at the restaurant Mm -hmm. and just pour that over it. And then you've got the avocado. The avocado is a healthy fat. It's a whole food and it's a healthy fat. And when you mix that all together, you're not going to miss the dressing at all. You're going to get something that's really healthy and beneficial, and it's going to provide what you need in that salad to make it satisfying. So that's one of my go-to things. You want to make sure if you're ordering salmon, make sure it's wild caught and not farmed. And again, you got to take their word for it, what it says on the menu and what they're telling you. So just trying to, you know, get the vegetables instead of the mashed potatoes. Potatoes are one of the things you definitely want to have organic if you're eating potatoes because of what they spray on them. So go for like broccoli or cruciferous vegetables aren't bad. You you could buy those non-organic and they're not going to be too bad as far as what's on them. So just kind of making those little swaps. But but skip the grilled chicken because it's going to be full of hormones, right? At a fast food restaurant. Yeah, it might be. I don't even know if they are allowed to do the hormones anymore, but I would skip it. I would skip it because most likely it's factory farmed. Mm-hmm. And if you've seen any documentary about factory farming, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's really terrible and it's not healthy and what they're feeding them. And they're also, I believe they also like shoot them up with something to make them grow. I've seen where the chickens are so big, they can barely stand on their little legs. They're like weebles and none of that is good. 
So yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, um, you remind me of one, <clears throat> the, the, the quote that led me to become a vegetarian the first time, I'm not now, um, <clears throat> it was in my political science class about congressional legislation. And this was in the textbook. It said, <clears throat> to fully appreciate congressional legislation and hot dogs, one should see neither being made. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> And that stuck with me uh, for quite a while. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go to that other meal. And that other meal is likely to be dinner. It's mm -hmm. likely to be the whole family. It's likely to be teenagers or young kids who have a taste. By the way, we rewatched <clears throat> Super Size Me again mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. That is so instructive. And my stepson, who's 15, who's never met a burger he doesn't like, um, he he was really paying attention, especially when the guy's doctor made him stop uh, yeah. doing it or he was going to die. Yeah, uh, fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you've got all these pallets at the table and... <clears throat> Let's 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 say where do you start because you've got to start somewhere with them. Where do you start? Homemade pizza with good ingredients. What do you do? You could do that. You could do if you're if you are going to do chicken or any animal products. You could do a baked chicken with seasonings that's organic. You definitely want to make sure it's organic. The salmon, like I said, wild caught. I personally don't eat any red meat or pork or anything like that and fish every once in a while, you know, if it's from a good source. Another thing that's fun to do is making bowls. You know how bowls are real popular now? Mm -hmm. So you could like when you go to like some of the places around here, like Fresh Kitchen, and they put in your base and then your veggies and all your toppings. So you could have some brown rice. You could do sweet potato noodles, something like that. Those are really good. You can do, I like to cut up sweet potato into cubes and just put it on a tray in the oven, not even putting any oil on it. Just put them on a tray and bake them in the oven. They're like candy. They're so good. Mm -hmm. You can do organic potatoes, little cubes as well. Um, black beans, avocado, maybe guacamole. So you can make it kind of fun by having a an array of things where they can just go and make their own bowl and they can pick and choose what they want. And that's really easy to do. You can make a bunch of it for several days too. Right. right. Um, so you've got to wean the kids off of this, off of this fast food stuff. Yeah. And, um, and maybe, maybe a homemade pizza that they might put their own toppings on mm -hmm. might be an in-between sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. You can even get organic sourdough pizza crust. You can find it. If you look for it, you can find it. You could put organic tomato sauce, whatever toppings you want. I'm not a big fan of dairy, but there are some organic non-dairy cheeses. There's certain brands that are better. Some of them are bad. Some of them, they're just junky processed foods. So right. if I prefer, if you are going to have any dairy that it's maybe from goat's milk or sheep's milk, something like that, if mm -hmm. at all possible, but I, I would really limit it. But yeah, that's something, like you said, you're weaning because they're not going to go from zero to 60 overnight. Right. So it's going to be taking those little baby steps and, and a gradual progression in most cases. Mm -hmm. And you know what I find, and I'm sure it's this way for others and especially kids is... <clears throat> When I start moving in a direction of junk food, just like this guy in Supersize Me, mm -hmm. when I start moving in that direction, I want more of it. And when I start moving in the other direction, I want more of that. I want to stay yeah. cleaner and lighter and less grease and all that. But yeah. each one sort of <clears throat> pulls you in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, so it can be really hard. You're so right. That's very common. And if we have gut dysbiosis, which is a 
imbalance of the gut bacteria and more bad gut bacteria in our microbiome, gut microbiome than good, the bad gut bacteria, they crave sugar, they feed on sugar, and they crave the chemicals and the junk that are in the processed foods. So the more, it's like a vicious cycle. The more we eat those foods, we're having more bad gut bacteria. There's more glyphosate getting in there. And that's where glyphosate really does its it's devious little thing. It's in the gut microbiome. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where it, it disrupts and upsets that. So the more you go towards the other direction with the healthy foods, our palates do change too. And mm-hmm. they get more alkaline. And then we start, when I first did this, when I, I started this almost 11 years ago, because I was not eating good and I was feeling it, I was feeling the effects of it. And I got on this program and all of a sudden an apple was the most delicious thing I ever tasted. It was amazing. And a piece of avocado was the most delicious thing. So your taste buds and your palate really does change. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had to limit it, my diet to three foods, you're going to think these are funny. Avocado, black olives, and artichokes. And all (laughs) the, the common denominator is that there's, there's this luscious fattiness to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think I could probably live on all those. My partner and her son are from Brazil and they've only been here a a couple of years. They've been in and out of the U S but they were really remarking recently on the obesity problem that we have in this country. And there are some, there i i went with them in february but it's not nearly the to the degree that we have here my theory is the worst culprit is soft drinks is uh carbonated drinks um as far as the empty calories yeah. and what is making people here so fat do you do you have any information on that Yes. And that's another thing I was just talking about this morning. I am so glad you brought that up. One Coke has 65 grams of sugar. That's 130% of the daily amount that you should have. So it's more than a hundred percent. That's one Coke. Now I haven't ordered Coke in years. I used to be back in the day, many, many years ago, I was a big diet Coke, Coke drinker, which is just as bad in a different way. But I remember back then, I don't know if restaurants are still doing this, but they were coming around nonstop with the refills. The minute mm-hmm. it started, they're right there with the refills. And one is 65 grams of sugar. The main ingredient after carbonated water, the next ingredient, high fructose corn syrup. So it covers all the bases. Glyphosate sprayed on the corn. You know, the, the corn seeds are called Roundup Ready because they can spray glyphosate. The corn won't die, just the weeds. Uh-huh. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Totally empty calories and caramel color, like all these things that are so not healthy. There's zero nutritive value, but it's also more than not just non-nutritive, it's detrimental. And it's so interesting because there's so much like, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Conflict of interest, I guess. At one point up until a handful of years ago, the American Diabetes Association was saying that if you stay on your medication, your metformin or whatever it is, you can have a Coke a day. You can go and have, now why would they encourage that? It just Mm -hmm. makes one wonder why would they encourage that? So. And it's not like most people drink a can of Coke. I think that's what you were referring to. Now it's by the bucket, you know, (laughs) and there are these you see the huge containers that people will carry around. It won't even fit in the cup holder. Yeah. Uh, But, uh, and, and the convenience stores um, really feed this, uh, no pun intended, with any size soft drink for 89 cents. Oh, yeah. So you can get a, an eight ounce, 10 ounce, or a big gulp. Yeah. Pocket, which because you're going to come in and buy a Snickers candy bar, probably the bigger one. So they want you coming back in. Um, so you agree it's that one of the biggest culprits is these empty calories in these soft drinks. Yeah, absolutely. One of the biggest. And I was thinking to myself today, 
I literally was thinking this because I, every time I see somebody drinking a soda, I think this, like, I feel like it's almost like smoking. Like you hardly ever see anybody smoking anymore. Not Mm -hmm. a lot of people. And then I see people drinking soda and I'm like, why are they drinking soda? Why didn't they get the memo? Like, like smoking, like, why are they drinking soda? And there's so many better alternatives. Water Mm -hmm. is a great one. And, you know, if you can get good quality filtered water, but also right now on the market, there's no shortage of sparkling flavored sparkling waters and organic ones. So they don't have anything artificial in them. Organic Mm -hmm. flavored sparkling waters, they're effervescent, they're refreshing. No, they're not going to be as sweet because they don't have sugar, added sugar in them like the sodas do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if somebody, you know how sometimes, Mark, you hear about people and especially men, they'll say, I dropped 30 pounds. All I did was stop drinking soda. Well, go figure. Not yep. surprising you because you were probably drinking it all day long and all that sugar. And there, I mean, there's such an uptick in type two diabetes and people who are pre-diabetic now, cardiovascular disease, they're all lifestyle diseases. That's why they're called lifestyle diseases. They're a result of these unhealthy lifestyle habits. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see one more thing before we move away from food and to some of these other four areas, but, and they all impact each other. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, one concern and, and one reason that people don't do, do better in this regard is cost. And if you're, if you go to whole foods, and buy all the things that you need to be healthy, you're going to spend <clears throat> at least double of Publix, which is we're down in Tampa Bay. Um, mm-hmm. So for a lot of people, it is a, an, a cost factor. Now, those same people will eat a lot of process, buy a lot of processed stuff. And if they just bought the basics, uh, potatoes instead of potato chips, yeah. then then their grocery bill would be a lot less expensive. But so I would say the average person cannot afford to go to Whole Foods to buy everything that they need, stay strictly organic. The the average middle Mm -hmm. class person here. Now, one option that I've discovered is Aldi. And Mm -hmm. um, Aldi is owned uh, by the same company that has Trader Joe's. Uh, okay. it's, it's a different family member, but oh, I didn't know that. Um, and they have a lot of the things that Trader Joe's has, and they do skew towards organic. So, a tip for people out there is if you've got an Aldi near you, um, you're going to save a lot of money and be able, you'll still have to pick and choose, but be able to get products with healthier ingredients. Yeah, right. that's a great tip. And I, I want to piggyback on that, if you don't mind. No, please. A couple other things I want to comment on. One is called the Clean 15 Dirty Dozen. You can go to ewg.org, which stands for Environmental Working Group. Every year they come out with a chart and it's Clean 15 Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen, those are the produce items that you always want to get organic, including cherries, apples, peaches, grapes things like that. The clean 15, you can get away with not getting organic. You can get conventional because they either have a thick skin like avocados, or they're just not really sprayed with very much at all, like the cruciferous vegetables. So that helps because then you use that as a guide. So you don't have to get all organic. And the other thing is the program I told you about that I have those two meals, you know what they break down to $6 per meal, $6. And what I found very eye-opening was I saw something recently where a Burger King meal was $12 and change. A Chipotle, I think it was a burrito or something was $12. And then Evos, which is a local place or regional that we have over here, that is quasi healthy beyond burger, which I don't consider healthy at all because it's got so many bad ingredients, but a beyond burger air fries and a nice tea was $18. Mm -hmm. So people are doing that. They're grabbing these foods, like you said, out of convenience, they're paying that. And with it's the 
prices have crept up because of inflation. Like they've just kind of crept up. And I just started noticing, you know, somebody showed that to me. And I noticed even myself getting a grab and go healthy thing from a little cafe over here, a lunch was almost $20. Yeah. So it's, when you really look at it, I, that's what I love about the program that I offer because it saves people so much money. Then they get their fruits and vegetables that they'll have as their snacks. They're still going to have their one healthy meal. And they're really transitioning at the same time to feeling so much better and getting those taste buds recalibrated to mm. really appreciate whole food, like you said, as opposed to fast food and junk food. Mm -hmm. And another go-to option here in Tampa Bay is, I think you mentioned it, Fresh Kitchen. And yeah. there, there are, I believe this is a, uh, a concept that's catching on nationwide. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like fast food. There are people behind a, a steam table that are serving decent servings of healthy food. I assume most of it's organic. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> but it's healthy options and it's no more expensive than the fast food meal. 10, yeah. 10 bucks you get yeah. more than you can eat in a in definitely a, a better option for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's another option. And I bet those choices, that type of choice is available in multiple cities, not mm -hmm. everywhere yet, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's move to one of these other uh, areas that we, most of us need to work on and they're all connected, but so let me just let you move in the direction that you like to move. You talked okay. about sleep, diet, which we've covered somewhat, stress, and movement. Where do you want to go next? Sleep. And okay. thank you for giving me the option because this is one of my favorite topics. So many people, almost everybody that I talk to, they're not sleeping. And we live in a world right now where this right here, this thing, is not just a phone anymore. It used to be a phone, but it's everything now. It's something we're looking at constantly. It's our computer. It's how we order stuff online. We, we do so much with this. Mm -hmm. So there's constantly blue light hitting us all day long. So sleep hygiene is so important because that's when our body repairs. That's when our brain detoxes. That's when our immune system recharges and disrupted sleep is connected to illness and a, a lot of serious things. So it's so important that we get that deep restful sleep and we actually have a sleep hygiene routine or kind of a wind down routine. So there's a few things that you can do that will help with that. One is in the morning, go outside and get outside in the sunshine for 15, 20 minutes. That's going to help reset our internal body clock, which is called our circadian rhythm. So our body gets used to having this clock time to get up, time to wind down, then getting off of these devices at least a couple hours before bed, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone has, depending on the phone, they have the phone I have, this is an iPhone 14. You, if you can't get off your devices for whatever reason, if you feel like you got to keep looking, you got to check that last email or whatever, get blue blocker glasses that will help cut out the blue light that keeps stimulating the pineal gland, which is going to keep us awake. But this phone, if I go three times, one, two, three, see it turn red. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent of blue blocker glasses. So when okay. I start, if I'm looking at my phone in the evening, it's always like this. Okay. And then I change it back in the daytime to that. That's an easy little tip. If your phone does that, just three little clicks, but getting off the devices, reading a book, a real book instead of a Kindle book you know, right. electronic, reading a real book, magnesium bath, blackout curtains, being in a room that's completely blacked out is going to help you get better sleep. And then I have a secret weapon, which is I have, and it's part of my program that the 90 day program is telling you about, but it's also available separately. It's a certified organic tart cherry concentrate. So tart cherries, it's the Montmorency cherry is the type has naturally occurring melatonin and also helps the body boost its own melatonin production. So what you want when you go to bed, you want that increase in melatonin and you want this cortisol, the stress hormone to drop down to practically nothing. Even sleep clinics recommend tart cherry. 
It's something you definitely want to get organic because it's on the dirty dozen. Cherries are on the dirty dozen list. But tar cherry, and then I add ocean trace minerals, which are rich in magnesium. I make a little mocktail with sparkling water an hour and a half before bed. And it is, you sleep like a dream. It's amazing. Things to avoid uh, probably are eating too late. What's yes. What's recommendation about how long before you go to bed that you should have your last anything? At least three hours. Okay. Yeah. What about alcohol? No, boy, you're on top of it, Mark. You are spot on. No alcohol. It might make you feel like you're starting to get sleepy, kind of help you wind down, but it's going to end up waking you up in the middle of the night. So That's avoid it completely. Yeah. And don't give me too much credit. I have some knowledge enough to be dangerous, but I'm it's impressed. Not, like I, not like I practice it all the time. So uh, well, don't, you, you have don't a great me, awareness. Yeah. Don't give me too much credit. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to reveal something I don't think I've ever revealed on the podcast. And that is that um, like a lot of men, I have a prostate issue and it's but I think 10 times the size of a normal prostate mm -hmm. that should be for men. So on a normal, no, a night that I don't take this remedy, I am up probably eight to 10 times a night going to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, urinating. So uh, what I have found, and I do would like to get your opinion about it, is we're in a state that has medical marijuana legal and mm -hmm. i do a gummy or a piece of chocolate uh cannabis chocolate not cbd but right. cannabis HC. right before i go to bed and i might I, I would say most of the time i'm up one time a night mm -hmm. and it seems to be at about the same time about 3 30 a.m so about the middle of my sleep um uh, so Talk about that a little bit from your from your perspective and your lens. Well, it's obviously working for you. So, you know, everyone's individual has their individual thing. But I think that's great if that's working for you. I am not an expert by any means on THC, but I know it has many medicinal uses and can be very beneficial. Um, I also have something else that I'm going to have you try for that. And that is something that can help. It, it gives prostate support with natural herbs. And I've heard from men, my husband and my best friend's husband, that they no longer have to get up in the middle of the night. Okay. So it's an herbal remedy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, but also, uh, and I'm happy to try it. Um, um, also, the sleep, it's like, it's like near death experience. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I really sleep deeply except for that one time. Yeah. KT is great for that, for sleep. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, here's a probably a myth. I've heard others say that it's a myth that you can catch up on sleep. When you get behind on sleep, you can catch up by doing a weekend sleepathon. Is, is that false? I believe that's false. You okay. need good, deep, restful sleep every night because every time you don't have it, it's causing some damage. So you want to make sure as much as possible. I can't emphasize enough the importance. It cannot be underestimated of having a wind down routine or good sleep hygiene. And it's all those things we talked about. There's so many things that can help, which so many people who aren't sleeping aren't doing that. They're eating right before bed. They're having a glass of wine. They're on their phone. You know, they're doing all these things that are stimulating and, and causing problems and not helping them in that direction at all. Mm -hmm. uh, what about amount, optimum amount of sleep? I do think it, it probably varies per individual mm -hmm. and by age also. Um, let's say a 40 year old, otherwise healthy person working a full-time job, do they need eight hours of sleep? Uh, generally? I mean, optimal would be seven, minimum seven or eight. Okay. You know how some people, cause we're in such a hustle culture. It's like, Oh, I only need two hours of sleep. Like they have this bravado, like they're bragging about it. And I'm like, yeah. that is not, 
that is not healthy. And by the way, I just wanted to say, you know, you brought up about not eating right before bed. And we've been bringing that up a little bit. The reason is when you go to sleep, you, you don't want your body revved up to be digesting food. You want it to be winding down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes total sense. Um, Okay. Uh, Anything else on sleep before we move to the next? Um, That's probably a good amount of like the basic 101 information that I think can be very helpful. Okay. How about if we move to movement next? Because boy, I, I just had a procedure that got me off of my cardio routine mm-hmm. and boy, I, I wasn't sleeping well. Um, to me, that's the, that's the, uh, the, that's the pair of these things that uh, affects me the most. Let's talk about exercise. Yeah. Um, and it, I'm sure it, it varies with age. Mm-hmm. Um, in, anyway, talk a little bit about movement. Yeah. So movement is, can be very simple. And, you know, you probably heard of the blue zones, the five areas in the world that have the highest concentrations of the oldest living people, people that are living to a hundred and beyond, but also they're living vibrant lives. They're enjoying life and they're not frail and can't do anything. They're actually going out and doing stuff. But one of the common denominators is movement And the interesting thing is they're not going to a gym in most cases, other than one is in Loma Linda, California, but in the other areas, they probably don't even have gyms there. If you wanted to join one, you probably couldn't even find one, but it's movement through the activities of their daily life. So one thing that's very beneficial after you have a meal, take a walk, take a 15 minute walk that helps your digestion. And it's very healthy to do that. Take a walk in the morning. You could get your sunshine and get your movement and kill two birds with one stone your sunshine for your, to help you with your circadian rhythm and your sleep and then your movement. So it can be simple. It could be pulling weeds. It could be gardening. It could be doing chores around the house. As long as you're move, you're off the couch, you know, you're, you're getting around, you're moving. It doesn't necessarily have to be something intense like CrossFit or anything like that, but just getting some kind of daily consistent movement is mm-hmm. always going to be helpful. And it's important for our health. What are those areas of the world that you were talking about where people move optimally? So China, one is China with uh, Tai Chi. Well, one is Okinawa, Japan. Okay. And then Loma Linda, California. And there's other common denominators besides movement, but that's definitely one of them. Um, another one is Ikaria, Greece, and the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica and Sardinia, Italy. And in Sardinia, it's very dense the way the buildings are built. And there's a lot of vertical because it's small. There's not a lot of land, you know, horizontal space. So a lot of them are going up and down stairs. They're Hmm. they're doing that. Some of them are herding goats and doing things like that. And then they don't have a lot of stress. They might have short-term stress, like getting the goats together, but then it is over. It's not chronic nonstop stress. Okay. So um, in terms of movement, it's not that important, I'm hearing you say, for it to be extreme uh, sports, that walking, yoga, I would imagine, falls into that category. Yeah, some weight-bearing, maybe some weight-bearing exercise. It can can even be with your own body weight, because that can help with bone health, too. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. is it more important for women to do some of these exercises because of bone loss? Yeah. It is men. Yes. The weight bearing exercises. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do you want to say about movement? Um, just try to get some every day. You know, it's all about consistency. It's about consistent steps and just getting started, even just getting started in its progress, not perfection with mm-hmm. any of this. We just want to get started. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. And we're not going to, like I said, we're not going to go zero to 60 overnight, but there is a compound effect when you're doing small steps consistently every single day, it pays off. And I would like to say something about stress if we have time. Yeah, let's go ahead. Um, Although let me just make one other point. Um, I think, 
I like to exercise in the afternoon and these shorter days make it harder for me to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's light until nine o'clock, I can go to the gym or go out for a walk. But when yeah. it's 530, I feel like, shit, I missed my opportunity. And it's yeah. only five days over. Yeah. So, OK, go ahead and uh, let's talk about stress, uh, meditation, other things that that help with that. Yeah. I mean, managing stress is really important. Stress can be a killer and we have to really take that seriously. And we live in stressful times. We live in a stressful world. So we have to really make sure that we're not constantly in fight or flight mode, which is the sympathetic nervous system. We have mm -hmm. our autonomic nervous system, which is controls our breathing and, you know, involuntary things that we would never be able to keep up with if we had to do it voluntarily, but then we can go into that sympathetic nervous system, which we need, you know, if, if you're walking down the street and there's a vicious dog coming at you, that's going to go into effect. You're, you need that, you need that adrenaline rush, but it's short term. You don't want to be in a constant state of stress because it releases stress hormones, cortisol among one, you know, among many, but the, it's not healthy. It can actually bring down or lower our immune system. So it's serious. If we we've got to manage, you met, mentioned meditation and just one thing I find that works really, really well for managing stress is every morning having a gratitude practice, just writing down three to five things that you're grateful for. And it could be very simple things. And that will shift. That'll shift the way you're thinking and the way you start your day and get you out of that mode. You want to be, you want to tap into that parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. And that's when our body repairs itself. That's what we need to be in more of that. So we want to just manage stress and try to be aware, have an awareness of it where we're not in that chronic, you know, always worrying always because it's not going to change anything we there's things that we can't change so focus on the things that we can and the things that we're grateful for and it will even change chemically you know hormones in our bodies yeah you know i have a mantra that i uh work with and there's this scarcity uh gratitude scarcity and abundance dichotomy that a lot of us have going on and the quote that really kicks my butt in a good way is scarcity cannot exist where there's gratitude. And I have practiced it and found that it's absolutely true. I cannot simultaneously hold feelings of scarcity and feelings of gratitude. I so. love that. That is beautiful. It feels so good, doesn't it? When you focus yeah. on gratitude and things that you have and appreciate it's wonderful. It's just, it's a whole different feeling of bliss almost. Yep. And sharing that with others, the clerk in the grocery store line, uh, who's not used to being appreciated. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, a different mindset for sure. That, that's such a great point. So many people and, don't hear that appreciation. A corollary to that, which tickles me is no whining on the yacht. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so many of us bemoan uh, yeah. first world problems here. Yeah, for sure. I know. Well, uh, let's, let's wind up. If, um, if people would like to reach out to you to have your guidance and mm -hmm. coaching, how can they best reach you? So best is, by text, my number 727-422-2031, Florida Eastern Time Zone, and also Instagram. And I post a lot of health tips on Instagram and okay. simple 101 things that anybody can implement. So my Instagram is at Sonia, S-O-N-I-A underscore Magruder, M-A-G-R-U-D-E-R. -E and then Facebook is Sonia Magruder just my name, facebook.com forward slash Sonia Magruder and email. Oh, actually, you know what? My website, soniamagruder.com and everything is on there too. Okay, good. 
And we'll put that down in the show notes below right. so that people can reference that and, and find you. Thank you. Um, okay, well, let's let's wrap up here. Um, I'd like to thank you, Sonia, for joining me. It was a, a rich and fast conversation, so I really appreciate it. And thanks for, for yeah. sharing your wisdom and perspective uh, as a Integrative. We didn't talk about that to get the right pronunciation. Integrative. Nutrition. Integrative. Okay, that's even easier to say. Mm -hmm. Nutrition health coach. Um, please uh, look for her, all of her information that she just said down in the show notes. You can also find out more about Thrive Co-Living Communities down in the show notes uh, and look to see what we're all about. So if you enjoyed the episode, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you can get more information about our future ones. And we do about one a week. So thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Sonia, thanks again for being on the Thrive Co-Living Communities podcast. Thank you so much, Mark. It was a pleasure and fun chatting with you. Good. Thanks for joining us for another great episode of the Thrive Co-Living Communities YouTube podcast. To learn more about our mission, and how you can support our vision of creating co-living communities worldwide, please visit us at thrivecolivingcommunities.org. To receive advanced viewings of our podcast and other exclusive content, find us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Thrive Co-Living Communities. You can also learn more ways to support our mission in the show notes below. Amazon Smile, GoFundMe, Kroger, and our own Thrive Gear store, where you can buy t-shirts, hats, and many other items. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon.